Right, the next website we're going to take a look at is Alan Hartboard, a wedding photographer. He's a wedding photographer from a beautiful part of the country, uh, very close to where I grew up in Tunbridge Wells in Kent. And Alan's got a fantastic uh, website, great portfolio of work, but at the moment it uh, needs a few little t- tweaks. He's got some really promising, fantastic bits of content on his website, but uh, it is a little bit of a mishmash uh, at the moment. So a couple of things that I'd like you to think about, Alan, is thinking very carefully as to the actual journey that you want your customer to take. You've got absolutely stunning photography, um, but at the moment the, the site takes us through a very unusual route. Now, I un- I know you aren't going to understand some of the things that I'm talking about here because I've found some of the parts that I'm going to talk about hidden away in your website that just need a little bit of attention. So first of all, beautiful gallery of images here. They're moving at a nice speed, so people are actually going to engage with some of those. You've got a, a great call-out box here telling us about the coronavirus and what's happening due to corona. And then we move into the content of your main page. Now, at the moment, um, you, you've got this key line here, tagline, welcome to the world, beautiful world of photography. Um, I found this quite a negative content context in the the use of the world of beautiful photography because our wedding photography is very much personal bespoke and tailored to to the person that we're going to be photographing so the, the concept of using the expression world of photography just kind of brought ideas to my head like land of leather and um furniture city and uh, bits like that, that that were kind of off the shelf you know same old same old and, and that's very much um, not the image that you're given with your photography. The next paragraph here goes into the lines that I'm a wedding photographer based in Tunbridge Wells, and as you like, as you see, I like to keep things simple and relaxed. All of this first cu- um, couple of paragraphs needs to be totally tailored about your your client, about their day, how you're going to help them plan their day, and, and very much capture what's uh, what's going to go on in um, in their wedding day for them to to treasure for a long time. Then the next thing after these kind of uh, hundred words here, we, we're straight into bang. Here's your wedding album. Well, we've not discussed. The wedding we've not discussed the wedding day we've not discussed what will actually happen during the photography and then we're into the, the kind of sales pitch of the afters so it's a bit like us walking into the restaurant and the first thing the waiter talking about is the dessert and the, the thing that we're going to remember from the evening rather than um the, the kind of um starters the aperitif the uh, the first course and then the main course so we're kind of straight into the the end game effectively i love the flip through the album part this is a really great idea and it's a great way of getting people to um, spend a little bit of time on our website um so i think this is a really cool feature i love how you've done that um google loves the fact that people spend time on our site so using this kind of thing it really helps people to spend some some time on our site we then come down to this part here is that how i photographed at your venue well first of all this can actually introduce a negative for people because if you haven't photographed at their venue, is it a reason why they shouldn't uh, engage with you? So we could change the phrase here um, to be something more along the lines of some of the stunning venues that I've worked at and take the negative away from it. The the buttons here, people aren't necessarily too likely to click through to these and they actually offer very little benefit to us SEO wise as they stand at the moment. But one thing that we can do is if we actually linked off to these venues, then we're in a position that it does actually give us some Google juice because Google likes for us to be to linking out to websites that aren't currently uh, linked to from our site. So we need a, a decent amount of links into our website. And so that might come from other directories, trade associations, bits like that. We also need to link out to some other websites as well that we're kind of referring to. So that's a good idea for some of these links, some of these two um, different clients' websites. You could make those changes over a number of weeks. So every time that Google goes back to your site, it's seeing a few more links and a few more links rather than um, blitzing the whole lot in one go. Again, we can change this little paragraph at the bottom here. And then the footer is what we call the junk drawer at the bottom. This is great. We've got some really nice, clear contact details for people to get in touch with you. Um, Covering all areas is a bit ambiguous. Is it all areas of Kent? Is it all areas of the southeast? Is it uh, all areas of the country? We might want to refine that ever so slightly. Down at the the left-hand side here, I'm not quite sure why this is here. Uh, It's a little bit of an online CV. 
Um, but I don't have a problem with that. What I would do is I'd left justify it because this side here is left justified. I would go through it uh, with a fine tooth comb because at the bottom here, there's no capital P on photographers, yet there's capital P on photographers above it. So we'd want those to all match up. But what you can do with these as well, Alan, is in another part of your site up here under info, um, you have a part here that's about professional qualifications and you have a part here which is all about professional awards. So you could actually link these back to pages that they refer to. What Google doesn't like too much is for us to have what we kind of call a, a straight line website. So it's home page and it branches off to um, like four or six main pages. What it likes it to do is us for to interlink the, the pages to other references and other information that helps and is useful throughout the site so interlinking these back to the the pages and the other references where they're expanded on will actually help us with um, our google seo so one of the things that i thought on this front page a couple of things that i'd say first of all there's a kind of a three-step process that you could pop in here on the page that so is consultation then wedding day and then um your album being delivered the kind of um, dessert after the, the wedding kind of thing that would, would work quite nicely here. So we could take people through the three steps that are involved in their wedding. Um, we've talked about uh, the where we've worked part below. One of the other things I've noticed, you're a member of two different trade associations um, or three different trade associations, and we've not actually included their logos at all. Including their logos, again, as I've said in a number of videos, gives us a, a level of um, trust that we're part of a professional body and there's a reason that we're part of a professional body so it'd be good to include those logos and again link back to the institute website or the society's website or the guild of photographers website so as i say popping those uh, trade association logos in it's one of those things if we're looking for a higher end client we're looking for solicitors accountants people that are middle managers if they hold professional qualifications themselves then they will understand the extent that you've gone to to win your awards to earn your qualifications and to get those letters after your name and it gives a, a certain level of customer protection to them as well and we can actually explain under our qualifications section why it's important why we've met a national standard um, and a little bit about the associations as well including those links back to the association websites if you've got a profile page on the guild of photographers um, site or the societies or the british institutes uh, pages then link to your specific page and get the value back from that again the, these awards images i'd be linking through to the the pages with those actual award details on now your website needed some work on the basic seo alan and um first of all there's no h1 headers we've got quite a number of h2 headers through the page um to explain it ever so briefly the way that google searches through your page it reads in all the coding first of all it reads the page title it reads the h1 headers then it reads the h2 headers and then it spiders through everything else but that's how it basically understands what's going on if we look at the moment I know that your site was built on a tool called is it gone? Rapid Weaver, which is a bit of software to, to write your site. Um, Rapid Weaver um, needs to do some work for you, basically. You need to work the SEO part of it a little bit harder. You're ranking on about the third page at the moment for wedding photographers in Tunbridge Wells. And I know that with some easy, uh, quick and easy tweaks, you can rank an awful lot higher. Uh, and so it should be a reasonably quick process for you so a few of the things that we're going to briefly look at I'm just going to pull up one of my tools here your page titles at the moment um, multi-award winning wedding photographer Alan Harbord fantastic it's not very sexy luxury wedding photographer Alan Harbord shows the process and flow of wedding photography from booking till delivery of the well wedding album again it's not very sexy if we look at the um, the way that it appears over in Google, let me just turn this part off, um, on the third page of Google at the moment is pulling in default data from your actual website, the first couple of lines of your page, and it's pulling in Alan Harbour, multi-award winning wedding photographer, I'm a wedding photographer based in Tunbridge Wells, you know, what is the difference between this text and the way that you're doing things here, and say, Rachel Luckhurst, it comes below you, Rachel Luckhurst, Tunbridge Wells, I've been working as a photographer for 15 years, um, Joe Knight, she's got, or John Knight rather, um, not very much difference there. At the end of the day, we want this to stand out. 
So we need to think very carefully about what makes us different from other photographers and how we're going to use the text in these two boxes to stand out. It could be a special offer. It could be about the venue. It could be about the style of dress. You know, we, we could use all sorts of different terms and parts in these parts. But every single one of our pages as we go through the website needs to be using different titles, different meta descriptions so that we're not duplicating those. So this was our first page. And then I went through to oh, the other thing I was going to say at the, the bottom here in the junk drawer. We can stuff a load of stuff in the junk drawer that we don't necessarily need on our website. Well, that we need on our website, but we don't need people to, to be looking at, first of all. So I love the fact about your menu at the top here that you've got a simple four buttons. So we need to think about the process that we want the client to go through to get to contact. So the whole point of our website is for them to come along, see some pretty pictures, read some nice comments, move through three or four buttons and hit that contact us button at the end here and then fill out the form. So the second button here was basically a gallery of about 10 different sections for the different parts of our photo album. Now, this is fantastic, but most of the pages on our website need to be having um, around 600 to 1,000 words for Google to be ranking those pages and, and to be seen as an authority on the subject that we're talking about. So we need to be adding some more content into the wedding album. So we could give a lot more detail about these, Alan, as to how we can customise them, the different steps of how we, we produce the album. Again, I suggested like three-step process. The different things that we can choose, we can choose the covers, linens, metals, you know, totally styled to them. The fact that they're handmade or, you know, selling the features of these, really introducing some nice wording. We could then have some testimonials from clients that are based around the actual album lower down the page here. So that it ties that fact together. But we go through each of the different uh, galleries of photos. One second. Not doing it for me now. There was 12 uh, different galleries of photos that came off the, the drop down list. Each of those galleries needed to have its own um, page with a bit more content to it. And we could, we could rename that from photos to something a little bit more inspiring. You could almost put it to inspiration. One of the next things that happened on the site, oh, why is it breaking for me? One of the next things that happened on the site was, right, so we're, we're back. Sorry, we had a quick glitch there, so we had to split the recording into two. So we looked through the different galleries of images, and personally, I think this is a little bit further, again, into the, uh, the route that our customer takes through the website than it currently is placed. I think we, we need to do a, a little bit of a pre-sale of, of what's going on before they actually get to look at the photo albums. Now, I had a look behind the scenes to some of the other SEO parts that we were just talking about. And if I show you here, running behind the scenes, you've used a piece of um, software to, to write the website which is fine, that's not a, not a problem at all. But what you, as we look through, this is the coding that sits behind the scenes at the moment. So we've got this image here that runs through the center of our page. It's called Stacks Image 2374BE5.jpg. That's great. You know, it means something to the software, but it means very little to Google or to our search engine optimization. Again, the alternate tag is Stacks Image 31. So as we look through this piece of coding that sits behind the whole of this uh, website, we're in a position that Google will look through our site and pick up. I mean, these are all the different image file names that uh, run through this, page, this site. They're the different parts of the album that we've looked through there should be a way that we can actually rename these files within the software that you're creating so that these images and information has a use to our website. Because at the moment, this is what Google sees. When it comes to your web page, it's pulling in all of this code here. The first thing it does is it loads some information out to Google Tag Manager and uh, links up to your 
Google Analytics account, which is this piece of code in here. It then it loads in the, the Facebook pixel code, which is fantastic. You, you're, you're doing the, um, you're tracking the Facebook um, advertising back. It then loads in some information here about Twitter and puts in some social content here. So when you copy information into Twitter, it's going to preload this SEO information. Then as we go down the page, it pulls in the fonts and, and other bits from Google. And then we've got all of our images. So here's an image here, the branding logo. Uh, the You've put some alt tag in to there for Tunbridge Wells Luxury Wedding Photographer. <clears throat> But there's a lot of other images that we could improve these file names. You know, first of all, each of these file names can actually relate back to these titles that we're giving to the pictures. Now, if we want all of our work to be around Tunbridge Wells, we can name them all Tunbridge Wells, but we can actually give them some other other names as well, other local areas that are close to, to where you want to be working. So there's some a little bit of work to be done there on some of the actual SEO coding. There's some issues translating between what's called the um, HTTP and HTTPS as well. So what happened is years ago, we all had HTTP websites uh, with our SSL certificate. And when we've all moved to uh, an SSL certificate, we get the HTTPS. Now there's a few errors in the background running between the two as it pushes you from one to the other. We can use some redirects in that position to, to sort out those issues. There's a couple of other bits as far as SEO go that, that could do as a look at. It's what's called our robots text file. There isn't one present for your site at the moment. That's what tells the, the Google search engine what to spider through your site and what not to. And we also need to have a little look at what's called an XML sitemap. And there's, there's quite a few little tools on the website on the web that we can use uh, to do that. But that XML sitemap is basically a site tree that tells Google what all of the different pages are on your site and how they're linked in together. Another issue that we looked at on the site down the bottom here, we've got a what's called plain text version of your email address. And it's in a couple of other places across the site as well. That's great. They just click on that link and it takes you to a mail client like Outlook or Gmail. But because it's in plain text, it's very, very easy for a spider to crawl your website and to to um, snag that email address and then add it to a spam bot. Now, you could change this email address to a picture, create that in Photoshop, put it here as a, a PNG file with a transparent background. And then you could actually link that with a uh, link back to the actual contact page because we want to effectively bring it through this route. Here was the other position that it's in plain text as well. So we want to dri direct everybody through the email address unless they actually physically put it into a mail client themselves. Leaving it as this text, it just means that we can open ourselves up to a load of spam coming through the web. While we're on the contact page, it's, I love the fact that it's nice and clear, easy to get in touch, telephone numbers are nice and clear, and everything like that. Just wanted to talk to you about wedding photographers, and if we think about the reputation that wedding photographers have, most people have got a friend that had a wedding photographer do their photos, that um, they may never have actually got the album, they may never have had the pictures delivered, my own wedding vi videographer... I've not seen, I've been married twice, and I've not seen the, the video from my first wedding yet uh, over 10 years later. So it's very easy for us to look at people that are professionals and wonder if they'll still be in business in a year or two's time. Because our industry has a reputation of, of weekend warriors that set up a business and then they might not be around. So one of the things I do say to photographers is if you have a tangible address like a home address or a business premises, then always include it in your marketing because it gives people, again, another reassurance that they actually have got somewhere that they can go if there's a problem, um, you know, and that, that you're a tangible business, that you're, you're there to take care of your customers in the long run. One of the other parts about your website loading, it loads quite nicely for, for me at the moment, but I'd say that you can also use what's called a content delivery network. And there's a piece of software called Cloudflare, which is absolutely fantastic. And you could use that to uh, to simplify all the coding on your website and compress it all. I mean that, that your pages will load quickly. 
I'm just having a problem here with my internet at the moment. Bear with me one second. So we go through the customer journey. We've spoken already about the way that uh, the front page is laid out. We spoke about the, the photo galleries and the, the place that they take in the next step of the journey. And then we look at the information page. And for me, as soon as I hit this info button here, it's uh, a little bit of overwhelm. There's things like uh, terms and conditions of privacy policy. They could quite happily be moved to links down here in the bottom of our junk drawer. And then we go through some of the other bits and pieces, pricing, online consultation, about Alan, your professional awards. Again, the professional awards and qualifications, I think, need to be built into the pages that you're, you, that you're promoting because they are um, very much your endorsements as you go through the journey. The same with reviews. At the moment, the reviews page is a little bit hectic. Uh, you've got all these little bits that pop in over various pictures. It's not a problem with those, but you might find it would be a little bit easier to have some of those popping up in other places. I like the free index and the Google parts. The chances are they're probably not gonna leave the page to go and look at those. There is a tool that we use on our website. Let me just show you ever so quickly, which is called Proof Source. And it, this is pops up in the bottom corner here, which is just testimonials coming from our Google My Business page, from my Facebook page, and bits like that. So you can use that piece of software. Um, the free plan that they use is fantastic. And that'd be quite a nice way of just having some testimonials pop up as they go through the, the page. So the testimonials, I would intersperse testimonials through all of the other pages, two to three per page, spread out. Don't be afraid of having long pages now because long pages can very much, uh, uh, you know, we, we're used to scrolling and looking for, for information, um, but all these bits flying in and flying out, they just kind of, I just find them a little bit hectic um, with our modern look at things. We talk about your style. You've got a whole area here on helpful videos, these effectively would build up your blogs and I love the, the fact that you're using these but they could actually be spread out through some of the pages if you, you've as I said earlier you've done a lot of the hard work for people and um, you've you've done a lot of the hard work of the kind of refinements we're talking about it's about using them in the right places if on that first page you had three videos about three different uh, areas of preparing for your wedding before that they get to the consultation you've pre-educated them as to the kind of things that you're expecting and, and they're also um the fantastic thing about wed uh, about videos is that they break the ice for us you know people are afraid of hitting contact or they're afraid of picking up the phone they're not sure who they're going to talk to on the other end or if they'll understand um accents or they we just have that kind of fear of man when picking up the phone now if they've seen you and heard what you're like in a video, then we've built that level of trust that it's, it's one less barrier to, to break, break through. The biggest thing I wanted to say about was your new page here. So because of the coronavirus, you've built a new page here um, about your online consultation. And actually, this epitomizes an awful lot of what I was saying about your homepage. And I think it's fantastic. We've got a paragraph here that needs to be tweaked a little bit more to the focus of um, the client and what the client are looking for. We could put in a little bit of new body text. But overall, this is a whole lot more. Um, this is so much better in the way that you, you promote this as your homepage now rather than at the current homepage that people are going to. I think it's so much fresher, so much cleaner, and I think it's an absolutely fantastic page. I'd be looking to roll this out as my homepage. You've got some great calls to action. I like the colors. I might make uh, some of these testimonials, something like 10% or 20% gray, because I need the actual focus to be on these calls to action. At the moment, the testimonials and the calls to action are fighting for my brain space as to which blue bit I look at. I'm not 100% keen on these keep changing quite so quickly. Um, I might, if I were you, just keep with three testimonials um, that people will actually stop and read rather than keep spinning and rolling. Um, just because we can animate things, 
doesn't mean that we have to. Um, there's that mentality of uh, like color popping and things like that. Just because it's do doable doesn't mean it's got a, a place in, in our website. But again, I really love the call to action. I like the, f the frequently asked questions. You could actually expand these. I know they go off to other pages. You could actually expand these out a little bit and you could pop your videos in here for each of the, the three at the bottom um, or four at the bottom rather. So I think that's a, a much more positive start for your website, Alan, than where you are at the moment. And I would build off uh, off of this. See how you captured their perfect day rather than the world of photography. So you've done a lot of the hard work here um, to, to build on things. I think it's a fantastic website. You've, you've put some legwork into it already. I think you've just got to sit down with a pen and paper, plan out their journey a little bit stronger, um, define their journey in your actual page. So here we, we've kind of separate this area and the call to action, maybe a three blocks here that say the three steps to um, the three steps to your wedding shoot, then take them through the process. So three icons, three paragraphs, uh, a triple three columns of text and uh, then take them through the process then the consultation but I'm, I'm really loving this page in comparison to some of the other ones so I think that's a great starting point for refreshing your website so that brings me towards the end of uh, of our review of Alan's website um, he's got some great starting points it's really nice, clean, fast loading and uh, hopefully that gives you some ideas of some bits to go off and, and work on to improve it. Thank you so much for your time. I'm Jamie Morgan.